Oh, folks, look. I thought I saw the Marianas Trench before, um, but uh, let me just give you a reference here. I mean, I mean, you see this nonsense. Pinterest, we're talking about Pinterest earnings today, by the way. Down 16% after hours, down 6% already in the normal trading session. And you know what this looks just like? Does this look like anything to anyone? I mean, I mean, look at your right. I mean, look at the right of the screen. I mean, look at this down, and then even further down. So, th this is my analogy for what this stock chart looks like right now. It's pretty rough. Uh, it's a scary one. So, this has been overall, can't lie to you, a pretty hot stock. Um, if you look over the last year, 185% up. Uh, really, 186. So we round up to 0.01% in this house. Uh, and not too crazy in the last, you know, um, you know, if you, I mean, since you look since 2019, not crazy, crazy, but, you know, 195% up isn't bad. The last year is where it's really turned on the Jets, baby. Turned on the Jets. Um, and that, I think, goes into effect when you consider uh, harsh reactions to stock prices. Um, and it's kind of falling in with, with similar things as well. When you look at uh, a lot of these social media stocks right now, they've been hit very hard by fear of user growth. Uh, my assumption is that's that's going to be the issue here. Uh, that's all people are tracking anymore. Um, there's a few things. I mean, you think about it. I think user growth is significant right now. You talk about user growth with subscription platforms, user growth with uh, social media. People focus on one specific set of numbers for an entire industry rather than looking at the whole business. It concerns me quite a bit. But that's just called, uh, you know, they're stupid. What can I say? How many times do I got to call them stupid? Because they're bumps. These investors don't know what they're doing. Anyways, let's take a look at these earnings. It could be more than that, but my assumption is it's an, it's an issue with um, user growth. That can be enough to say, especially a stock that's been skyrocketing as much as Pinterest over the last year, that can be enough to make this thing go kablooey. That's right, I said it. So EPS, it's a beat. Uh, non gabby is a 25 cents. Compared to 12 cents and a gap EPS of 10 cents beats by 11 cents. That's nice. Um, it's a nice beat because this is a company that wasn't at all profitable last year and wasn't expected profitability this quarter at least, and they posted a profit line. I like to see that. I do. This is such a uh, such a really good business model for uh, profit, which is why I don't know how Snapchat's not on the you know program yet but um, big model here I mean we're talking about margin it's incredible on these companies um, which is nice uh, and a revenue line looks fantastic 613 million up 125 percent year over year it's a beat by 51 million again that huge comp beat is because of uh, ad revenue so that's that's where you see that huge comp beat this quarter last year was the absolute trench uh, the Mariana trench of uh, of uh, of ad rates, so um, and now we're we've recovered. Um, adjusted EBITDA one hundred seventy-eight million compared to a consensus of eighty-nine, so doubled that estimate. Really, that's nice. I mean, I, I like that. I like that in a profitability standpoint. Again, it's adjusted, but I like it. Here is where we have an issue. I can already see it. Global monthly active users rose nine percent to four hundred fifty-four million customers. You see a rise. That's not too bad. The consensus was four hundred eighty-four million on this one 484 million people expected on a global monthly active in the US they fell monthly active users fell in the US that is where the concern lies um, now unless your Netflix stock which somehow you know didn't dip 10% when it was uh, you know losing US subscribers but let's forget about that they trade on their own entire uh, index really they just forget about it they're their own market but um, a consensus was 96.1 million, and they 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 declined monthly active users, and they even missed on international monthly active users. Expected at 388, they put up 363. That's a massive, massive miss in that perspective. And my assumption is guidance not going to be looking too much brighter. It's going to be a tougher comp uh, quarter for them next quarter. Let's take a look at some of the finer details here. This is the concern. <clears throat> Gap net income though. Uh, came in at $69 million. Not bad at all. I like to see that number. I really do. Um, 
and you're talking about against a loss of 100 million last year in this quarter. So massive, massive change there. And you see the revenue change. I mean, it's it's huge, huge. Uh, really, some might say huge, but I, I like it a lot. Um, definitely something we like to look at. Got to look at monthly active and average revenue per user. So. Um, Global, we saw 9% growth, 5% decline in the U.S., 30% international. What I like is average revenue per user. Now, that's where you saw a great revenue beat as well as more profitability. Look at the growth and average revenue per user, and that's where I think this company can really grow into where it needs to go. You grow the average revenue per user, so user growth isn't necessarily as huge for you. You're making more money per user. They nearly doubled in every segment. Um that's nice. I mean, average revenue per user in the U.S. grew 100%. International grew 163, which obviously isn't much because you think about the fact that there's a lot more restrictions that lead that to being such a small amount. But still, you grow this number, each customer's worth more. So if you have, you know, a, a stagnant number, the more you grow this number, you're still growing revenue. You know, you're still growing. We like it. Guidance. This is one thing we can navigate. Uncertainty. Um, our current expectation is that Q3 revenue will go low 40% range. I'd like it to be higher than that, frankly. Again, ad rates saw recovery, but I don't think enough to see that you'd only grow by that percentage. Operating expenses will grow modestly quarter over quarter as they ramp investments into long-term strategic priorities. Um, <clears throat> what matters here is going to be users, numbers. Obviously, that's what people are buying in for. Engagement headwinds uh, continue. Uh, continue in July, monthly active users declined approximately 7% um, as of July 27th. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, monthly active have grown approximately 5% globally, though, but still don't like it. Um, ugh. And they're not providing guidance for monthly active users for the next quarter, which is also why the stock is significantly down. So there's everything pretty well going against the stock in terms of this 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 uh, earnings report. So that's why you see a significant downward movement. Let's look at the balance sheet on this company, one that I think um, you know uh, has uh, it's not bad at all. But total current assets here 2.6 um, billion dollars uh, compared to 2.3 billion dollars uh, of six months ago. Growth in the cash position mostly. Uh, total assets in general at 2.8 compared to 2.6, uh, growth around 300 million dollars there. Um, mostly just due to the current assets, not bad. Um, liabilities, I'm not scared about this number. Total liabilities here sitting at 381 compared to 367. So stockholder equity is in a fantastic place. This is what actually one of the premier balance sheets um, you see, and that's what I'm talking about with this fantastic business model where profit is huge. The profit potential is massive for these type of companies. $2.5 billion in equity compared to um, uh, 2.2. Nice growth there. The balance sheet, the only thing I would improve on is likely bumping up the total assets as a whole. I'd like to see it closer to a four to $5 billion number. I just want more. I like a big balance sheet. I do. Um, but this business model is fantastic for profit. I like it a lot. Now, let's look at the stock itself. Um, we must consider here, um, this is a company trading at a $45 billion market cap. Really, after today, let's be fair, it's going to be trading closer to 43 um, uh, probably around 40 I mean, gosh, if it stays at this 16% decline, uh, you'll be trading closer to a uh, under sub-40 market cap. Now, this is a company this year likely... Um, I would say likely. Uh, it's it's not crazy, crazy numbers, but they'll probably be doing three, three billion is, is what I would say they end close to. Now, again, it's a sub 40 market cap, and that's still over 10 times the value. So is that a good pick for you? I don't know. Not a profitable company. It wasn't last year, so the P ratio doesn't exist, but you look for P and potential earnings, it could be pretty massive. Um, so... Just think about the potential there. It's not a company I necessarily like for the buy right now. And my concern there would be that user growth number, frankly. And, you know, as much as I call Wall Street a bunch of idiots, and they are, it's the same reason why I would never buy Netflix right now. You're declining in your biggest market. You're declining users already. And this company is, frankly, it's not, it's not a 
huge company quite yet. And we're not talking about a, a Facebook bringing in $27 billion a quarter. This company's bringing in $600 million. So the fact that they're already seeing declines in user growth, I don't think they should. I, I'm, I'm concerned by that number. Uh, and that's why you see this this on the right-hand side. This, that's why you see this and this uh, and that uh, and that and that uh, and that. Oh, that didn't show me actually. One prayer, well, three likes equals one prayer. Don't forget it, and I need them right now, please. So don't forget about those. Um, yeah, that's what I got for you today. Not buying the stock, but if you're into it, I get it. I just think the run has been a little too hot. Good buying opportunity if this is the stock for you.